All right, so let's talk about symmetric positive definite matrices. I give the example of, a, well, a couple of examples of how it's used. The covariance uh, for a set of random variables is always positive definite. And energy functions are often positive definite. In particular, you'll often look at the energy function near a minimum and can express it as a quadratic. This is basically a quadratic because you have a, a vector uh, basically two two copies of a vector, so it's like a vector squared. Uh, you always have terms of order two, like if I have a component xj and a component xi, every term in this sum is going to have a term xj xi or xj squared. So this really is a quadratic expression, and we'll see that later on also. All right, so uh, here, uh, a lot of these problems have to do with the fact of rotating graphs. So here we have an ellipse can be rotated by orthogonal matrix to a diagonal form. This is also true in high dimensions. So here we talk about rotating graphs. Okay. So first of all, <clears throat> suppose that A is a 2 by 2 rotation matrix co corresponding to counterclockwise angle theta. And suppose F is a function, not necessarily linear. What's the geometrical relationship between the graphs of F of x equals c and F of ax equals c? Now, in this case, the graph is, um, if the rotation matrix is counterclockwise, then the graph is rotated clockwise. As I mentioned that this is similar to the relationship between shifts in uh, ordinary graphing. If you take f of x minus a, you actually shift it to the right. Why is that? Because when x equals a, then x minus a is 0. So where the original graph was at x equals 0 is where the new graph is at x equals a. So you need to get this inverse relationship that if the a matrix here, uh, then uh, and I apply a to the argument of my function, then the graph of this resulting function is going to shift, is going to go the opposite way, have the opposite rotation. Uh, another way of saying this is if a is a 45 degree uh, counterclockwise rotation, then if x is 45 degrees clockwise of, zero, of the x-axis, then this will take it to the x-axis, and then I'll get this value of f. Okay? So that means that the x below the x-axis is going to have the same value at the x -axis, the x as the x-axis. So think about this. This is similar, as I said, to one-dimensional graphing, that the, the transformation, uh, if it's a rotation, uh, if I apply the rotation to the argument, then the graph rotates the other way. All right, so I give the ellipse E with semi-major axis 3, semi-minor axis 2, centered at 0, 0. Write the equation of the ellipse at x transpose m x equals 1. I think I did these problems also in a, a help, help session. You can go look at the, uh, what, what do you call it, the the WebEx recordings that we have. I think I talk about that there. But here, this M is going to be a diagonal matrix with 1 ninth and 1 fourth on the diagonal. If you work this out, then that's going to give you x squared over 9 plus y squared over 4 equals 1. Okay. Find the equation of the ellipse at E, rotate at angle pi over 4 counterclockwise. All right. Okay. So what you want to do is you want to, so this is angle of pi over 4 counterclockwise. So I, in this situation, but I want to find a rotation, uh, rotation A that take, rotates A clockwise. Okay, so I'm going to apply a rotation, a clockwise rotation uh, to X and then take my same equation. Now, if I, re if I replace a clockwise rotation, then I'm just putting RX here. So I put uh, RX here and RX transpose here. That's the same thing as replacing M with R transpose MR where r is pi over 4 rotation clockwise. Okay. All right, let's go on to the next uh, problem here. So given a hyperbola, and this is a hyperbola, if you have an ellipse, it's a plus. Here, if you have a minus, it's a hyperbola. You go back to your analytic geometry, you can see that. x1 squared over 4 minus x2 squared over 9 is equal to 1. I'm going to graph the hyperbola. You go, again, go back to your analytic geometry. There's two asymptotes. Uh, one up and one down, and it also has x-intercepts. You get the x-intercepts by plugging x2 equal to 0. So the x-intercepts are x1 equals plus or minus 2. So it's going to look like a sideways uh, egg cup, sort of. All right, now, find a change of variable y equals x such that the equation can be read as y squared minus 
uh, y2 squared, y1 squared minus y2 squared equals 1. So this one here corresponds to my y1 squared. This one here corresponds to my y2 squared. I just take y1 equals x1 over 2, y2 equals x2 over 3. And if I want to get that as a matrix, it's a diagonal matrix with entries 1 half and 1 third. Okay, part C. Find the equation of the hyperbola of y squared minus y, y1 squared minus y2 squared equals 1. Rotate it counterclockwise by pi over 4 radians. All right, so this is the same problem that we had before. Okay, so uh, here now my, my matrix for this one is now just the identity matrix, but I have 1 and minus 1 on the diagonal, right? If I express this as y, m, y transpose m, y, y transpose m, y, then m will just be this diagonal matrix, 1 minus 1 on the diagonal. All right, I should have said y transpose dy. If I express this as y transpose dy, then d will be 1 minus 1 on the diagonal. Okay, but then I want to rotate. So that's similar to what I have up here in part b. If I want to rotate counterclockwise, then I have to put the clockwise rotation applied to y, and the clockwise rotation applied to y here. And if I take the transpose, then the clockwise rotation here goes next to the d, and I get this new matrix here. This still has the form y transpose times matrix times y equal to 1. Same form. Okay. Right. So now, so let me go back and, and replace these expressions with their expressions in terms of x1 and x2. Uh, if you do that, remember that y equals ax. So all I need to do is replace the y here with ax. So I get this ax transpose, which is the same as x transpose a transpose. Then here I have a transpose times r minus pi over 4 transpose, which is the same thing as r minus pi over 4, 4 times a transpose, times d times r minus pi over 4 times a. So what are we doing here geometrically? Here it seems like, suppose I want to rotate this graph here. So it seems like a nice way to do that would be to make this graph look nice as a standard hyperbola, and then rotate, and then substitute back in my original variables. Now the question is, is that the same thing as just rotating the original graph? If I rotate the original graph, transform first and compress it into a nice shape and then rotate and then change my variables back again, do I get the same graph as if I rotate directly? Okay, so this is the graph where I take the original graph and I compress it, make it look nice, rotate it, and then I'll replace the original graph, original variables back again. Now suppose we rotate directly. If we rotate directly, what do we get? Well, in this case, I'm just going to be uh, taking, I'm going to be taking my original matrix, my, my original hyperbola, which is this one, and doing the rotation. Now, this one here can be expressed as x, m, x, x transpose m, x. What is my m? Well, a little thought can convince you that my m matrix here is related to this a matrix here. I still have the one half and the one third, okay? But here I have one half squared and one third squared. Now, when I originally wrote up the solution to this problem, I thought, well, okay, it should be a squared. But the problem here is that a squared has diagonal entries one half squared and one third squared, which is one fourth and one ninth. That's not what I want. I want one fourth and negative one ninth. The way to fix that is to put my d in the middle. If I take a d a here, so this shouldn't, this shouldn't be like this. This should be ADA, like that. Okay. All right, so here we've got this. Now, if I want to rotate, as I said, if I want to rotate counterclockwise, I need to apply the clockwise rotation to X. Okay, so to this, uh, the, to, to my original equation, all right, this should be equal to 1, sorry, and this should be equal to 1, so I should say that. So where was I? Okay. So my original equation was x transpose ADA x equal to 1. That's my original equation. Now if I want to rotate, then I'm going to apply the rotation to x here and the rotation to x here. Okay. So I get this result. Now still, I still have the same form x transpose times some matrix and then that's equal to 1. Okay, here I can actually put a transpose because a and a because a is actually symmetric, so I might as well make it symmetric and put a transpose here. Okay, so here I have x transpose times some matrix times x is equal to one. Here I have x transpose times some matrix times x is equal to one. 
So the question, are these two matrices the same? That's the question asked here in part F. And it, they, although they look very close, in fact, they're not the same because A and R do not commute. That's one of the facts about, of course, that's one of the facts about matrices. And rotations do not commute with these rescaling matrices. Okay? So although this seems like a nice uh, thought of, of how to rotate a general hyperbola, uh, it's not going to give you the right answer. Okay? So it's different if you apply re rescaling and rotate or if you rotate directly. All right, those would give you two different results. Okay, number four, without doing any calculations, describe the graph of the following equation. Okay, so what's going on here? Uh, here I've got some, uh, if I didn't have these funny matrices here, this ma single matrix here would give me an ellipse, right? The ellipse would have semi-major axis of, of one and two. Semi-major axis is the square root of the, uh, of the entry here, okay? And so, the uh, semi-major axis is along the x-axis. The semi, uh, se I'm sorry, semi-major axis is on the y-axis. Semi-major axis is along the x-axis. Okay. Now, what does this do? This is a rotation matrix. What angle is this a rotation matrix for? Well, rotation matrix is cos theta minus sine theta sine theta cos theta. Okay. So that means the cosine theta is one half. This is a rotation angle for 60 degrees or pi over three. Since this is a rotation angle for pi over 3 clockwise, the ellipse is rotated counterclockwise by an angle of, of pi over 3. So I should say clockwise, I can say clockwise by an angle of pi over 3, and that's the same thing as, uh, the same thing as counterclockwise by an angle of pi over 3. Okay. Okay. So, I, I, I'm sorry, that is counterclockwise by minus pi over 3. So I was correct in the, the, I was correct the first time. It's counterclockwise by angle of minus pi over 3. Sorry. Okay. Where are we? Okay, we're now here. Where are we? Lost my place. Okay. All right. Let's go through these problems here. Well, I guess I'll do this in the next video. We'll stop here for a minute.